Good afternoon. You're watching AB Live, a news-based chat show in which we discuss topics ranging from business, news, politics, and so much more. On today's episode, we will be discussing the business of theater. And in the studios right now, we have Mehdi Ustaz Salami from Dubai Opera, and we also have Liz Cruz from Broadway Entertainment Group. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you Thank very you. much. Liz, I bet you've had a busy month, I'd say. So tell us more about Phantom of the Opera and how the response has been so far here. Well, we've had uh, a phenomenal response and it's surprised um, everybody. Mm. It's been, it, the show runs through until this Saturday, but genuinely we've been thrilled with, uh, thrilled with our audiences and it, we've been surprised by the turnout. I mean, Phantom of the Opera, in all across the world, it's been seen by 150 million people it's been um, pre presented in 150 cities. And for those countries that have been lucky to stage Phantom of the Opera, it's always been a game changer for culture yeah. and for the arts yeah. because it attracts so many new people to the venues. So this is probably, it's the most popular musical in the world. And I think our response is that people have been genuinely surprised by the quality and the innovation that it's been able to be staged here. So that's enhanced by the venue, Dubai Opera. Right, so what exactly has Phantom of the Opera done to the venue, uh, like she mentioned? How has it helped or promoted Dubai Opera? It's promoted it a lot. It's, it's um, as Liz has just been saying, it's brought us audiences, new audiences. Um, it's it's taken us to a, to a different level. Let's introduce the venue to probably uh, people who haven't been to Dubai Opera yet. I think this is our longest running show that we've ever had okay. at Dubai Opera, so 30 performances right. in total. Um, I think one of the key things as well is, and we were just talking about this, midweek performances. Mm -hmm. um, just backtracking a little bit before Dubai Opera existed, um, concerts, performances, shows on a Monday night, on a Tuesday night, they didn't really happen or they didn't really happen that much in the region. Yeah. And then you bring in a... a, there, was, a, a there was certainly no demand. There was mm, no yeah. demand for multiple week engagements. So most of the region had evolved uh, as a concert-based um, concert based show, a, pop, a popular concert, rock and pop. Yeah. But there'd been no multiple week engagements until Dubai Opera had opened two, three years ago. Right. So I but think... But since Dubai Opera, you've definitely seen more of these weekly engagements. We have. Appetite. We have indeed. And that's across all genres. So it's yeah. not just with the musicals. It's with rock and pop shows. It's with uh, the ballets and the operas. Um, now people are going out on a Monday night and we're seeing full, full house as right. well. Um, and I think there's an appetite for it, obviously, because... As we're saying, there hasn't really been much of it in the past. Mm -hmm. People are wanting to go out and do something different, something of a certain quality. They want to be entertained. They want to be in a surrounding that's beautiful. Yeah. But, you know, the seats, the, the comfort, the customer service, every single box ticks that customer experience for those people. And whether it be the quality of what we have on our stage mm -hmm. or the quality of, of, of the venue and, and the staff. Right, so then do you ta have a type of audience that comes to the opera and comes for shows like Phantom of the Opera then? I think programming finds different audiences. Right. And different, there's different sectors, there's different genres. Something like Phantom of the Opera uh, is a classic and it's a brand name. So for all of those people uh, that, that don't necessarily know the venue, mm -hmm. they, they can be guaranteed and feel confident that it's a brand name that's been playing for 30 years in Broadway and, and or the West End. And, and I think what we're seeing is for midweek performances, why Dubai Opera has, is so unique is that Po the general population in Dubai now know that they can go somewhere on a Monday night. Right. That there's something on. Yeah. And whether it's Phantom, whether it's a ballet, whether it's a concert, mm -hmm. that there's somewhere to go that has maybe 300 performances a year. Right. And I think knowing that has changed the culture and the landscape of, of Dubai. So essentially, and downtown. Right, great. But yeah. you're not just uh, catering to the elite or that segment at all, no, right? No, no. And no. that's really, really important. And I'm glad you've brought that, that point up because our efforts with our programming are very much this is, this is a, a, a building a venue for everybody. 
you know, and that's reflected in our programming. So whereas we it's also have, reflected in our pricing and the pricing and midweek pricing exactly accommodates that the entry point for a musical is 250 dirham. Okay, and it's more expensive on weekends because we know that we uh, that we will receive GCC and international guests as a destination. That right. Dubai is a destination, so we work very closely with our partnerships of Dubai Tourism, Dubai Calendar, whether it's our airlines, the hotel chains. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, people will come to Dubai for the weekend. So we really look to develop uh, from a grassroots level our yeah. audiences on midweek and we make it affordable for everybody. All right, brilliant. Now and, that, and that's why last night on a Monday night, first time ever, we achieved 91% financial Congratulations. capacity, which is phenomenal. Yeah, I tell you, yeah. it definitely yeah, yeah. is. But just pulling the conversation a little away and a little broader now, uh, talking about the business of theatre over here in the region, again, you said that this particular show and play does have an ap appetite yeah. or did have an appetite over the last month. But just theatre in general, do you think there is a demand for it now? Yes, absolutely. And I think the proof is in the pudding. It's w with what we've achieved with eight performances a week with Phantom. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing over 200 shows in Dubai Opera alone across all these other genres as well. Um, there is definitely an appetite for it. People, people want it. People are buying the tickets and we're... We're still, you know, for Dubai Opera, Broadway Entertainment Group have been around for a long time, much longer than, than the opera has. Um, we're only three years old and we've seen our program and our audience numbers increase year on year on year on year and that has enabled us to develop the program and to trial new things as mm -hmm. well. Um, we did our first play this year uh, with Othello, Shakespeare, mm -hmm. um, and we did Much Ado About Nothing again as well, which, which audiences absolutely loved. That This had never been presented in this way before and these were long runs right um, so now we've got more uh, theatrical productions coming up next year um, one which we're just about to announce uh, together uh, not um, now though but not now <laughs> um, but we've got Dilem for Murder as well mm -hmm. um, which is another classic um, and we're also introducing uh, a new musical um, to the region called Broken Wings it's okay. on sale yeah um, and that's in January of okay. next year uh, Khalid Gibran, mm -hmm. uh, based on his uh, uh, his masterpiece from I think 1912. Okay. Um, uh, and that's that's Arabic, and it's themed, you know, with the region and so on. So there's a real connection. And again, this is a very new a new type of piece of art that maybe had we started off with that three years ago, it might not have connected as easily as it has now because we have developed our audiences and we've yeah. introduced all these different art forms. And there's this. There's this um, element of trust that the audiences in Dubai have now with Dubai Opera and yeah. with the programming that we that we put on with our partners, whether it be Broadway Entertainment Group or others. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, to answer your question, yes, there is. There's definitely an appetite. For so you touched on timing right now, so that right now is a good time. What I want to ask you, Liz, is, is it really a good time? And I'm talking about competition here mm -hmm. and not competition from fellow promoters mm -hmm. or event organizers in the region, but competition from movies, theaters, Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, streaming services. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step back to your previous question for a moment sure. about about uh, demand for entertainment. Um, I, be, I was based, my company was based in London for 20 years. I was part of an international uh, company called, uh, my company was acquired many years ago by Live Nation, Clear Channel, and we decided um, post becoming independent again to move our head office from London to here. Okay. And in 2011, it was our intention and our vision to bridge Europe and Asia with a base in Dubai. Mm -hmm. and to grow uh, uh, the emerging markets. Right. And um, from our perspective, which was family musicals, we started with Disney's Beauty and the Beast, and there was no venue there. We were playing in Abu Dhabi, we brought in Shrek, and we played a couple of other markets. Mm -hmm. I mean, from our perspective, we have fact now that we, we made history uh, four weeks ago when we opened Phantom of the Opera in Dubai, uh, and we also opened The Wizard of Oz in Riyadh. Okay. And this year will be the first year that um, our shows have, some of our shows have played 10 weeks in the region. So our business model has been looking at aggregating profitability and growth from the region right. and using uh, Dubai as the innovative uh, leader in the arts. Would you say it's more profitable now than it was a few years back? 
I think profit is, we look at aggregating profitability across the world. Mm -hmm. I think in a flat market where sales are down, you just need to go and find your audience. You need to work harder. The audience is there. The audiences haven't changed. Right. So our growth from, we, we see, we, we welcome competition because the more arts venues in the region, mm -hmm. the more shows in the region, the more that this becomes, uh, that we're building the building an industry through infrastructure and yeah. content and that we see future interest develop from the next generation, then we our growth and the job creation and the facilitation of uh, revenue through live entertainment mm -hmm. is then at the forefront of new industries. Right. So this year we will have achieved nine weeks in KSA. We Our company is part and we're very proud to be associated with the Riyadh season mm -hmm. and we've worked with the General, General Entertainment Authority uh, in Saudi Arabia. Right. Our partners, we're the strongest partners here with all of our commercial content and we've probably done eight weeks here. But throughout the region this year, including our musicals in Bahrain, Kuwait, KSA and here, when we started, I think we did two weeks in, two weeks, three weeks with Disney's Beauty and the Beast in 2012 or 13. And this year we'll have done 20 weeks and 160 performances. Oh, wow. So we are the living proof that the vision <laughs> to come to Dubai and build the region has been successful. Very impressive you know? <laughs> for sure. But since you mentioned KSA, now that KSA is opening up its entertainment and tourism avenues, that's great for you, I'm sure, for mm. independent companies with branches all over the GCC. I'm sure it's good for you. How about for you? Because you did mention that you do get a lot of people from the GCC. Now that there's another option, do you, are you worried that your audience could be divided and split? No. Not at all. Not, Not at, at all. all. And and I think on the contrary. And, audiences uh, are growing. Uh, the, yeah. Exactly. The audiences are growing, but also it's creating more of a network. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it be Saudi or Bahrain or Oman or um, Kuwait, um, we actually be, we become more attractive as yeah. a touring route. You know, whether it's, it's for a musical or for a rock and pop artist. Beginning. If you look at our capacity and the number of tickets and... Dubai still has the only venue in the region, I mean, next to Kuwait, but mm -hmm. Dubai is a destinational, uh, it has, it, it's destinational. And so, so audience growth is what we started, but the network is what will create right. the future. Yeah. Okay, so you're yeah. attracting people from countries outside of the GCC. Everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. You just stay here for and longer. Whether that's Saudis or Kuwaitis, they'll still come for weekends right. if there's something on. If it's, they decide to see it in their, in their own country, Fantastic as well, mm -hmm. because because if we look at the population of the entire GCC, there's a lot of people who have never been into a venue and never seen a show, mm -hmm. and that's who we're looking for. Yeah. All right, you know, of any age group at any price right. factor. Now, so. speaking of age group, though, uh, traditionally there is a consensus, and I could be wrong, that theatre has attracted a slightly more sophisticated or older audience. So now, again, coming back to what I asked earlier about the advent of streaming services, do you see that uh, sort of being a challenge to this industry, to the theatre industry? No. Uh, from, from my perception... Uh, it's only a perception thing. Yeah. Uh, perspective. Sorry, it's a perception thing. I think a lot of people still do think like this. And I think in our industry, and in, in even the venue I was in, in in London before, Royal Albert Hall, um, we were always fighting against this perception. And our programming, for example, today caters for all ages. We've just put mm. a show on sale called yes. Le Petit Prince, mm -hmm. um, which is a family show. And Direct there's... from Paris, was a sellout in Paris. Yeah, and, and it's it's already doing really, really well. Right. Yeah. But we have, we have young artists on our stage. We yeah. have community shows. We work with local dance schools. Mm -hmm. um, we have schools matinees so when we did the plays that I mentioned we made sure that we had matinee shows that were just for schools right. just for young people and again accessible ticket pricing um, so it's 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 not something I'm worried about it's something that I think we constantly strive to, to improve mm -hmm. and grow mm -hmm. and also another thing with Dubai Opera um, it's again a perception thing that we're called opera we're not an opera house. Yeah. We're called Dubai Opera. Um, we don't we don't want people to feel intimidated thinking that we only cater for the opera and the ballet and and that that actually the opera programming is actually quite a small part of our program throughout mm -hmm. the year. We do everything. Yeah, you know? I was here for a comedy show once. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so comedy yeah. we've done squash tournaments. Yeah. Right? You know, we've done dinners, we've done everything and the magical thing about that is because of the venue mm. and the venue the technology behind the venue is 
so, like something mm. I've never seen before, where the venue can change so much. You know, you've got walls that disappear and floors that rise and all this kind of stuff. And then people will walk in and say, oh, where's the other venue? Mm -hmm. Because it looks completely <laughs> different. Right. And, that, and that allows us to be a versatile space that can put on standing gigs for young people, you know, who, who, who want to dance all night and, and, and enjoy the show, or right. a more, as you say, sophisticated audience with theater or ballet or, or, or whatever. Right, so obviously the entire world is going towards customer, consumer, user experience right now. Yeah. And I was actually at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and Camp Now uh, had in included 5G and VR experiences just for the stadium audience. Do we see that coming here in the theater sphere about more technology and innovation being used just to improve the customer experience or consumer experience? I think so. Um, uh, it's still quite young here mm. in, in terms of within the arts. We are about to announce a show that's going to be hologram based. All right. Um, so watch this space. Um, <laughs> but in terms of uh, the shows in general, I think, I think we're still growing. Right, yeah. and, and that's probably something that, that will be emerging more and more. I know that in the UK and Europe and so on, this was a very, very big topic, big topic. you know, AR, VR shows, yeah. and, um, uh, technology and incorporating that into, I mean, we see already technology having a real presence in our big productions, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the magic behind Phantom of the Opera, which I yeah. hope you'll get a chance to see, it, it, it's, it, that's what it's all about. And yeah. that's always growing and developing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd like, I, I'm sure we will see it more and more as time goes on. And does technology also impact uh, the sales and revenue aspect of it? Are people expecting that? Yeah, I think, I think marketing is different for each country. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the, the methods of marketing is, um, what, you know, I think we can see the, the digital uh, evolution has arrived in, in Dubai and the Middle East. Yeah. And the use of just the mobile phone for you know buying your tickets and, and access it's all about it's all about the consumer access and i think uh, marketing is, has certainly changed i mean we see that our digital marketing and our social media is the new form of television mm -hmm. you know for us in this region it's what's very important is is primarily print is very important press has played a huge part mm -hmm. still traditional press but it may be that people are reading those articles it's all about the advance information and that that our job as well through the evolution of digital is that people may be reading magazines but they're reading them online right and so it's the the, the tradition of the the newspaper still exists but we've got to move with the new generation that wants to have access to information and access to knowledge access to the time of shows or the information on shows influences like it's it's that entire platform and the evolution is changing so quickly. Yeah. But also, everything that you can read on digital, we find still that it comes down to a simple recommendation mm -hmm. from one person to another. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't take away the fact that your neighbor, your girlfriend, your, you know, whoever it is, has. That word of mouth yeah. is still the fastest. Of that course. enhances digital. Which is why influencer marketing is perhaps working. That is word exactly. of mouth just digitally, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so then yeah. right now, what would you say were, are the main challenges that US Dubai Opera uh, or the entire industry at this juncture is facing? I think I think one of the big challenges, which obviously now is growing based on the conversation we've had, is is geographically where we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And when you're trying to attract these big international productions or artists, yeah. um, convincing complex. them to come all the way here for one, which is why then when there's more happening in the region, it becomes more attractive. Okay. But also cost, mm -hmm. you know, the cost of, of flying somebody over and their entourage and the set and the costumes and and everything else that comes with it. It's enormous cost. It's, it's a very, very big cost. And it's a very high risk business. Yeah. And so that's a lot easier than when you're based in London and mm. they just have to go down the road or, you know, from, from Europe, which is yeah. much closer. Um, so that's the challenge. And also sometimes there is a challenge that Dubai is still seen as the uh, city that will throw money, yeah. you know, at shows or artists. And so when we're negotiating, 
Um, it's got a lot better. Mm. I think it's 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 you know, and you'll know this a lot. There's, there's a balance. It's, We're there's, mindful of the balance. Yeah, and and it's improved a lot. There's there's still that perception, mm. um, and even this perception that we can charge astronomical ticket prices because everybody in Dubai has lots of money. Yeah. Uh -huh. The reality is no. This is no. just a normal city like <laughs> yeah. everywhere else, and we have to be very mindful of not pricing people out. And actually, with the economic situation now, right? Exactly. Of course, and it's geographically challenged from the perspective that if you take Phantom for example. Uh, you know, it may take four weeks from its four to six weeks on sea. It's 22 containers, mm -hmm. huge production, 130 wow. people. So, uh, and that's that's not alone the freelancers and everyone in the theatre yeah. that's in, that's employed. But, but I think if you look at that, it's for a four week season. It may have taken 16 weeks mm -hmm. because of the travel timetable. Right. You know, with the other productions, we've used air cargo. In the region for for distances, geographical distances that are that take longer than three weeks sea freight, we've looked at the opportunities of air cargo so we can keep our shows moving. Right. And so, um, but but you know that you have to have very commercial content to be able to to do that, you know. But when you look at something like Phantom that's here for four weeks, which is the longest running show, yeah. still it's still a sixteen week proposition. Right. With 16 weeks of costs. Yeah, yeah. And you can't negate that. So then would you say it's a lucrative business option to get into the business of events? There's still scope and potential there in this region? Of course there's scope and potential, but it's about what's the future trends. And also this business is a very high-risk business. And, uh, you know, I've been this has been my career for 20 years. I've worked across the globe on Broadway and West End and in yeah. 35, 35 countries. You know, we've, we've been fortunate with our choice of programming and right. it's about diversity and different genres and, and also understanding how long a show should stay in the market. It's really, should Phantom have stayed uh, six weeks? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Four weeks was, uh, maybe three weeks would have been better, but four weeks, this fourth week to us is really exciting right. because it's a timetable of seven days left. And yesterday we did our best sales. Okay. Ever in one day. Oh wow! Uh, and also, we did our best sales for the day into that night's performance. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, we broke records of the highest selling show ever. Oh wow! <laughs> so, if we hadn't <laughs> continued into this fourth week, which was the sleepless nights, you know, I still uh, can't go to sleep until after eleven thirty until I get my ticket sales report. <laughs> yeah. And now it's incredibly daunting because I've got five shows on sale here, <laughs> and now I'm looking at everyone, but you know, every single sales report. But I can't go to sleep until I've seen my sales report at eleven thirty, and then I'll either have a sleepless night <laughs> of what extra sales do we have to do and what are we going to do about it, or yeah. I could have a restful night. I go, okay, that's that's a great job. Well done. So clearly the bar has been set really high. So how are you going to maintain <laughs> the consistency for the rest of the year? So this was Phantom here. Yeah. How, what are your plans for the future or the near future at least? Well, for us, we have shows. We have The Wizard of Oz that opened in Jeddah two mm -hmm. days ago. We have Thriller that's also at the Riyadh season for three weeks and Broadway Riyadh. Um, the rest of the bar for here, they've... They've got very successful productions coming in yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that have been here annually. The Nutcracker, yeah. which is a perennial title for new audiences. Yeah. I think what's exciting for here as well, and the Jingle Bells, uh, we're, the winter we're, season. We're uh, going to have a Christmas at Dubai Opera. Yeah. Okay. And this is something yeah. we're, we're about to, to properly announce. But we've got such a rich program of events and Christmas markets and different Christmas festive shows for different types of audiences, whether it be The Nutcracker or Handel's Messiah, Jingle Bell favorites. Um, for us, you know, outside of these big production, these big musicals, um, it's it's about the one one off shows mm -hmm. as well, you know, and keeping that program diverse. So we've got Ronnie Scott's jazz 60th anniversary concert right. uh, taking place here. And we've got Hacienda Classical returning. We've got Misha Paris, which is our first rock and pop. Yeah. Uh, so she's doing a tribute to Aretha Franklin. OK, a really, really and special night. Next oh, wow. year, we have some amazing plays. You play. We do, yeah, we do. And the varied content, but I think I think it's about varied content. Yeah, it's very genres. Okay. You know, Le Petit Prince is, is going to be magnificent. Broken Wings is yeah. is groundbreaking for its first time here. Yeah, and it'll have enormous caliber. And I think that those new audiences that have come to Dubai Opera and there's, you know, we we'll, we will achieve over close to fifty thousand 
tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, those new audiences, we believe, will start looking at what else is on. Yeah. And they may not know what the brand or what the show is. Yeah. But it's also our role in playing an education in encouraging that they'll enjoy those titles they don't know. Right. I mean, next year we've got shows. We, after the success of Thriller, we've got The Greatest Love of All. Uh, which yeah. is the Whitney Houston's Whitney <laughs> Whitney Houston Houston tribute uh, yeah. show? Okay, um, and at, and just to add to that, it's going back to what we were saying earlier on about developing a trust mm -hmm. yeah. with these audiences and the quality of these shows. Yeah, um, and once you've done that, then you can start experimenting a bit more with your program because to date, you yes. know, as the arts and this this whole scene is relatively new to Dubai. You have to be very careful as a presenter, as a promoter, not to go too niche or yeah. too artsy. Yeah. You can do that in London and York and Paris. Yeah. And Where there's a huge population base yeah. for every type of entertainment. Yeah. Whereas here, you have to, again, like we were saying with Phantom, you have to grow it and grow it's, it and grow it. So now what I'm, my hope is, as, as, as we grow, is to develop the program by trying new yeah. things, by testing the audience. At audiences. the moment, it's general entertainment and yeah. entertainment for everyone. All right. You know, my vision for the company is entertainment for everyone mm. across the region, across the world. World. We work in Asia, we work in all of these markets, but really it's about entertainment from everyone from five, six years age up to 18, who, who, whatever the age group everyone. is, you know, that's, that's, Every, right. that's everybody really should be able to, to be. come here, not feel intimidated, mm -hmm. yeah. feel that they're welcome here, there's something that they something can relate to and right. they can understand. Right, so it's a destination yeah. for all then, that's brilliant and also yes. you're right in the centre, in the heart of Dubai in downtown here, so I think that probably helps as well. But again, so the last show is on the 9th of November? Correct. Alright, great, very excited, I hope I get to catch it and thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks so pleasure. much for those insights as well. Thank and thank you. you for watching AB Live, we will be back again next Tuesday.